Hi guys, Jordan here with Motion Ray, and recently we've been posting a lot more to Instagram and TikTok, so feel free to check us out there. But this video comes from a trend on TikTok that, to be honest, I never really quite understood. It's called the glitch trend, but it always felt more to me like stuttering or skipping, not an actual glitch. Maybe I'm just old and out of touch, but I always thought of glitching as something more like this. So in this video, I'm gonna break down my version of the glitch trend, and I'm gonna bring you behind the scenes to show you exactly how I got this effect. First step was to find a nice area to get a clean plate with nothing in frame. This might seem insignificant, but the location here is actually really strategic. It's got two things that are gonna really help me out here. A constant lighting setup with bright sunshine, but the main area here is in shade. So the lighting isn't really changing in the places where I'm standing. And the second thing is it's got a really contrasty background. I'll be wearing mostly black, and so the pink is really gonna help make sure that I stand out clearly and I'm able to be separated out later. Okay, so don't touch the camera and keep on rolling because we need to go through the motion of this trend now, which unfortunately for me means dancing. But then what I planned out was to stutter a little bit and then go through a series of small glitches. So I acted surprised before being transported to this spot, which just meant that I ran to that next spot where I acted surprised again and then moved on to this spot where I ended up again. It always helps to blend digital with practical effects whenever you can. So here at each of these new locations, I'm starting it by jumping and then landing before acting surprised. So when I cut it in later on, it'll look like I'm starting from a little bit above the ground and make it feel more like a mistake. Cool, so we filmed our clean plate and our main section here, but there's one more thing that I need to include and that's my dog. The whole purpose of why he's actually there is to ground the shot in reality. Basically to contrast somebody glitching with somebody staying relatively normal. He's not glitching out, but he is observing and reacting to the glitching. So I walked him to the right spot and got him to follow my eye line to the spots where I had previously shot myself. Thankfully, there was a couple of good reactions that he gave, which I made a mental note of that I could use as sort of startled reactions. Here, he's just excited, but in the right context, it could pass for being surprised or startled. Okay, so the hardest part, in my opinion, is done. The make or break point is really the filming for this effect. But now that we're done, we can actually bring this into Premiere Pro and start to build out the look of this. We're gonna stack these three sections on top of each other. So first, take the clean plate section and place it down on the bottom layer. Then, I'll place the shots of me on top of that, going through these motions. Here's where I start to build out the effect. And the base of the effect actually isn't me going through the motion, it's actually the sound. There's a basic sound that goes with this trend, and so I laid that down on the timeline underneath my footage here, but then I started to play around with it. I started to repeat a bunch of sections together in one, two, and three frame increments, so that it felt a little bit inconsistent and like it was skipping and repeating. Then I took each next stage and increased the speed of the music by about two to three percent, causing it to feel like things are ramping up emotionally. Then I took that concept and increased the speed in chunks all the way until the end here where it was playing at around 120%, which gives us this feeling for the sound. Now that we have our sound done, we can start to tailor the shots of the motion in line with what the music is doing. Thankfully, the glitching feeling will help us to do things like hard cut to different sections of the footage without it feeling out of place. It actually works better. So I'll start here by having a two frame section and then repeating it right after itself then taking that second section and reversing it, which gives us this feeling like we're going forwards and then backwards. Then when things start to really glitch out, we can take one to two frame chunks and just repeat them in a row so that things start to stutter. And we can even pause for a couple of frames on a single image to really break up the pacing and make it feel off-putting. Next is where we start to incorporate the real glitching. Find where you'd like to add a glitch, and then you can use a couple different options, including native Premiere options. First, if you already have a Motion Ray subscription, you can use our glitch plugins or presets. And even if you have a free account, you can still try these out for free with a watermark if you'd like. Or you can just use the VR glitch preset right inside of Premiere, and you can check out this video where I broke down exactly what parameters to key in to get this look. And for quick reference, it's at this time code of that video, and I'll link to it in the description below. But you guys will notice that this glitch impacts the whole frame. So how do we get it to just impact our subject? Masking. No, God, please, no! Hold on, it's not that bad. This is actually a best case scenario if you hate masking because you don't actually need a detailed mask. You can actually get away with a really terrible quick mask. Just use the pen tool under opacity and make a really generic shape around your subject here. 
and when you turn the effect back on, you can see that it actually blends outside of the mask really well. And because you have a clean plate underneath you, what you're seeing through to is exactly the same thing as what's actually behind your subject. It's so cool, no green screen required. It actually works better this way. Masking and glitching are just two of those effects that go together like peanut butter and jelly, like chocolate and peanut butter. I guess peanut butter just goes with a lot of things, I guess. So this is where we are so far, but now we can literally just cut to our subject's next spot, falling from the starting point. And this looks okay, but I'm actually gonna add a motion array glitch transition out to help make it feel even more glitchy, and I'm using the shaker transition here. I made another garbage 20 second mask around the subject, so that now this is what this section looks like. And I'll use that same transition into this shot here. If you slow it down, you can really start to see a bunch of problems, but guess what? No one's watching it slowed down. So as long as it looks good in full speed, that's all that matters for us in this case. For the next two sections here, we're gonna be doing exactly the same thing. Mask around your subject for a couple of frames, and then cut to the new shot where we mask around me here at the top of my jump. And I'm gonna add in a motion array RGB glitch effect here to this clip, and then just reuse the same preset of our VR glitch effect here by copying and pasting it to the new clip. You can also just save this effect for later by right clicking on it and saving it as a preset. Now this looks really great. From here, I wanted to do this thing where I pop up, but upside down. So here I'll make a more detailed mask around myself, but I only need it for one frame because I'll use that one still frame three times in a row. Pop it upside down using the rotation tool and then position it roughly in the same spot, but just up a little bit. Then move it up in position for the next two frames in a row, but in an inconsistent amount. And in this middle frame, I'm gonna reuse that same VR glitch effect I saved from before, just for one frame. And that gives us this. Nice. And from there, we're just gonna be reusing some of the same shots from before so that it feels like I'm popping in and out of these different locations. Nothing being added beyond what's just in those shots already. And that gives us this. Great, but there's one last thing that we need, and that's my dog. So I'll take that section of the footage here and place it on top of everything and then mask out a section of the footage that I didn't overlap with and that he doesn't exit. Thankfully, he stood really still so I can actually feather this entire section out a lot and overlap it with this entire section here. The main reason that I did that is because there's actually a lot of cars and people passing through in my take and in the clean plate, but in Boomer's take, there was actually a lot of clean empty space, which was really fortunate. Now I'll start with him looking at what he's supposed to here, and then he turns to look at me in this new position, but he's really slow. So how did I get around this? I just sped it up, literally. This section of the finished video is just him doing this, but at 750% speed. That's it. Other sections like this nice little lunge helped me to cut on motion to hide harsh cuts, but there were a few other sections that were challenging to find good cutting points. So I had to look around a bit, but after a little bit of searching, I found a few, and then to loop it back perfectly, I actually took this section of Boomer at the very beginning, turning and looking, and just duplicated it and played it in reverse at the end. And to be honest, the cutting point looked a little bit jarring, but there was really not much that I could do about that, so I kinda had to say, good enough. So with all that work done, all the visuals are complete, and we can add in just a few glitching sound effects to really help to sell the effect. I got all of these glitch sound effects from motionarray.com, and I've left a link to some of my favorites so that you can check them out as well. And then the cherry on top was to take this blown out white section and do a simple sky replacement to make the scene look a little bit more majestic. We have a full breakdown of how to do sky replacements inside of After Effects and DaVinci Resolve, so I'll link to those in the description below. But with all that out of the way, that gives us our final result. Listen to me now. Guys, I really hope that you liked this slightly different tutorial. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe, and feel free to check out those glitch plugins that I mentioned that I used in this tutorial. They're linked in the description below, and like I mentioned, they're absolutely 100% free to use and try out with a watermark, but the shifter transition set is 100% free to use with no watermark, just as our little way of saying thanks. And for those of you who caught the tutorial about a week ago, you'll know that we have a comment contest running where we're giving away a free three month subscription to motionarray.com, and the winner to that is Hans. So congratulations, I've already reached out to you so you can claim your prize of a free three month subscription. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.